Yeah. Oh, are we on? I was studying the fauna and flora of South America. In today's Scientist TV episode, the STEM glasses are VR goggles and the topic, immersive education. In today's Scientist TV episode, we are joined by a representative from the Ministry of Education from Turkey. We have two representatives from the STEM Alliance partners, Qualcomm and Lenovo. And we also have a teacher who has tested the Arete technology that we showed earlier. Also, at the end of the episode, we'll be telling you the winners of last month's episode of competition who, won, who, who will have won a very cool Scientix Infinity notebook. At the end of today's episode as well, we'll tell you how to win new ones. So we're going to start with introducing Dr. Tunç Erdal Aktur, project coordinator of the Turkish Ministry of National Education. Now, it's under Dr. Ad, uh, Dr. Ad Dur's coordination that 28 teachers from 14 schools in Turkey joined the European Commission funded project Arete. During this project, what they did was test materials and technology in their geography and geometry classes. And we're very excited to have him here today. Now, we'll be telling you more about the project of Arete later on, as well as the tests. But first, Dr. Akdur, why did you think that it was important and needed to help teachers engage? with immersive technologies. Thank you very much for this question, Agueda. I think that technology has become an integral part of our daily lives and students have to master different technologies to succeed in their lessons. Immersive educational technologies such as augmented reality or virtual reality are an effective way for many learners to develop their knowledge and skills. With these technologies, it is very easy to capture students' attention and fully involve them in their learning process. When students can see, feel, and experience what are they are learning, it becomes easier for them to understand and remember what they are studying. Besides that, immersive technologies also provide students with new opportunities for collaborative learning, creativity, and critical thinking. Students can take what they learn in class and apply it in real life. So they develop 21st century skills, which they will use later in their daily life. Immersive technologies such as virtual reality or augmented reality help students learn more effectively by creating an environment that motivates them to learn. But immersive technologies are not just for students. They must also engage teachers. In this regard, governments have a very important role to play in encouraging and supporting those teachers, their teachers that are near to or intimidated by these technologies. If we want to realize the full potential of immersive technologies in education initiatives, this, these initiatives such as Arete project that allow teachers to learn and experiment with technology are very much needed. This is my opinion. Thank you very much. It's actually really true that you actually need to connect with real life and you encourage and motivate students to basically be more interested in the classes. And this is a very nice way of doing it. Thank you very much for joining us today. And it's uh, great to see Ministries of Education, of course, uh, supporting such forward-looking initiatives. Thank you and see you soon. Now, of course, someone has to create these very cool technologies for us to be able to use them in classroom. So my colleague Ivana Kovac, coordinator of the STEM Alliance, is going to speak to two representatives of companies at the cutting edge of education technology. Ivana? Thank you, Agida. Well, today I have with me Brian Moynihan and Elliot Levine. Brian is a Global Education Solutions Manager at Lenovo, focusing on VR classroom. And Elliot, who was an educator for nearly 30 years, is a director of worldwide education for Qualcomm Technologies. Elliot, can you tell us something about immersive technology and what value does it add for teachers and students in primary and secondary schools? And also, is there any change when it comes to learning outcomes? Well, Ivana, passive learning, such as reading a book or listening to a lecture, they deliver marginal results for most children. 
And that's a fact that educational experts have known since the 1960s. You know, for rogue memorization of facts, such as, you know, what year the Magna Carta was signed, that approach is fine. But to really learn, understand, and demonstrate mastery in more abstract concepts across STEM subjects, this is where hands-on simulations deliver substantially better results. Uh, Lenovo virtual reality and augmented reality tools, they're leveraging Qualcomm XR processors, and they're allowing and enabling educators to personalize learning, but most importantly, to make that learning relevant. And to your second point, you know, studies have shown recently students can master concepts 65% to 400% faster using virtual reality versus traditional classroom instruction. Thank you very much. And when it comes to AR, VR, XR, Brian, can you maybe help us understand the differences and also how can we use those in classrooms? Sure, thanks, Ivana. So augmented reality or AR is when 3D digital content is added to a live view of the world around you. So you could do this on a phone or a tablet, um, but it could also be done much more immersively if you had a pair of glasses that add to the world you see around you or a VR headset that uses video to show the world around you. This is great for being able to visualize a molecule and chemistry class, uh, giving a much better understanding than a flat two-dimensional experience could give. Now, virtual reality, or VR, is an immersive experience that replaces a real-life environment with a virtual simulation. So all around you is the virtual world. And this is best when you want to do something that's impossible or difficult to do in the physical world. Uh, you can travel to Mars, you can go into the bloodstream, you can travel around the world. And so that's great. And then, so for XR, that's just a term, extended reality, that we talk about when we're talking about AR, VR, and everything in between. Thank you very much, Brian and Elliot, for these insights. And immersive technology really is a game changer for education. Agata? Thank you, Ivana, Brian, and Elliot. Now, we are speaking about the future of education. And today I'm sitting in the middle of a life-size experiment of ex related exactly to that. This is the future classroom at European SchoolNet. So today, my colleague, Nikki Medanovic, is going to give us a very quick tour of the future classroom lab. Now, Nikki, can you do it in 90 seconds? Well, Agata, 90 seconds is kind of quick, but let's try it. In this zone, the teacher takes the students through the steps of a learning scenario, but they shouldn't be the only ones talking. <laughs> through movable chairs, the space offers a different way of sitting with your classmates. This encourages teamwork and collaborative learning. Interactive whiteboards and collaborative spaces further supports exchanges between students. The modular furniture is also a great way to establish a flipped classroom, where students study at home independently and they come to class to work on projects, either individually or with their peers. This also helps them reflect on their learning. This zone is for inquiry and project-based learning. Some of the tools here include data loggers, microscopes, and robots. In this zone, students transfer their knowledge to create new content. In this makerspace, there are simple tools such as scissors or paper or even electronic circuit boards. In this zone, students also have access to 3D printers and 3D scanners. Students need to have a chance to present what they've created. They can use projectors, screens, and online survey tools to present their work and get feedback from their classmates. It's important to remember that creating a future classroom means more than just investing in furniture and equipment. It all starts with a mindset of innovative pedagogy. Now, Agata, I hope that was quick enough. But you know, technology still adds a lot to students' learning experiences. One of the organizations that European SchoolNet is involved in is Arete, which develops AR and 3D applications for educational settings. For example, one app that they created was a 3D app for geography lessons. Today we have with us Teresa Gravina, who piloted the app in Italy. Teresita, welcome to Scientix TV. Hello, thank you so much for inviting me to be there with you. Of course. So AR is a big step away from traditional teaching. What made you join this pilot? Why did you think that it was important? 
Uh, first of all, I always uh, love to try new things to use it in my classes. So for me, every opportunity is more than welcome. But I really want to try AR uh, because I think could be a very important technology to transform our classes into laboratory because with AR it's it's so easy the student can touch and see in different way the thing they are working on and I love the idea of this pilot because the students have the app but also the book so it seems more official not more just a different lesson using something new but a very learning part so it sounds very hands on uh, so yeah. how did it go for you and your students? Oh, uh, you have to think that I have just one hour to work on this with my students and they were always asking, when we have the technological teacher who works with the app? So <laughs> I think they loved it. And uh, I realized that they loved it because they work a lot. And I can ask them to do a lot of things and they never complain. And they, they cannot imagine how much they are studying using this app that for them, could be a, a game. That's a that's a really good point, but maybe we should ask the ask the ask experts about that. Brian, let's bring you back. Do you have any tips for teachers using immersive technology in their classroom? Yes, when teachers consider how best to implement AR and VR in their classrooms and their curriculum, they should think about both how to learn and use the technology, but also how the lessons will be integrated um, best into their learning outcomes. And so this will take a little time to do the best way. So you want to take that into account. And you're best off thinking about the big picture. So teaching with immersive technology can be amazing and engaging, transformative experience. But schools should look for an end-to-end -end solution that includes not just the VR headsets, but also great content that really fits their curriculum, training for the teachers and the IT staff at the school so they know what they're doing, and then helpful support if they have questions. So if you look for a solution designed for education and one that's designed to scale beyond individual people, that's that's key. And it'll make a big difference in your ability to really make the most out of teaching with immersive tech. So as a final question, where is immersive education headed in the future? Wow. Um, well, first off, I think that most XR experiences today are still very individualized. And in the coming years, I think we're going to see much more collaborative, augmented, and virtual reality experiences. So students could actually team up or work in competition with one another. Plus, with the use of APIs, educators should start to be able to actually collect learning analytics from these XR experiences. And as a result, you know, getting that data back allows them and the systems to start mapping the curriculum to identify the strengths and weaknesses of a particular child so that really learning truly becomes personalized for every child, that they can gain mastery on the subject matter at their own pace, and most importantly, explore the personal passions that are relevant most to each and every one of them. Now, these are all really fascinating points, and I have many more questions, but unfortunately, we are out of time. Agata? Thank you, Nikki, Brian, Elliot. Teresita and Tunch for joining us today. Now, if you want to learn more about European Schoolness Future Classroom Lab, check out the URL that is appearing on your screens now. And as always, don't forget to comment on our Scientix TV episodes on the YouTube channel and also to on our social media channels or any social media channels mentioning the hashtag Scientix TV. Now, we did love the creative and constructive comments that you left for us from last episode. And for the, we have selected a number of winners that are going to be appearing now on the screen. Thank you very much for your comments. The Infinity Notebooks are on their way. Now, the registration for the Scientist Conference is open. The conference will be taking place online on the 18th and 19th of November. And if you would like to also win one of our Infinity Notebooks, you should Comment on the social, me on social media or on the YouTube channel telling us, one, what you really liked, two, what could we do better, and three, why are you coming to the Scientix conference in November? Now, that's it. Thanks again to our guests and to everybody that makes the Scientix TV possible. We are looking forward to seeing you again, and we do enjoy making this show where you can see everything through STEM glasses. Thank you, and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.